So what we're going to talk about in this video is uh, something called zero return or reference return. And it's what we have to do when we first turn on a CNC machine. Um, so I'm going to start by telling you how to actually switch the machine off because it uh, makes more sense to do it that way. Um, when we turn a CNC machine off, um, it's a good idea to position the table in a certain way. And that is to do with weight distribution. And if you look at the, this table here, you can see that uh, because of its design, if, the, if you've got a heavy workpiece and it was in a certain position, it could put more load on the table. So it's not a bad idea to position the workpiece in the centre of the table before you switch the machine off. Or in other words, move the table so that the workpiece is sort of over if you look there, the sort of centre line of the machine. And this will depend on design of machines. Not all machines, this won't matter on some machines. Another thing to note is that on some old machines, where the brakes that secure the, um, stop this head uh, from dropping down, uh, if they are faulty, sometimes these can drop down when the machine's switched off. So you might even have to position, some people even have to put the taller over the component with a block of wood in the way. I mean, I'm not suggesting you do that every time, but these are all things to consider when we switch off the machine. Now, um, so obviously we position the machine in a certain way when we switch it off, so that the next day when we switch on the machine, um, we can um, we can reference it, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Now, um, on most controls, you are meant to hit the emergency stop button first and then shut the machine down. But obviously this is going to depend on individual machines, so you do need to know this. An important thing about shutting machines off is that um, if you switch the whole thing down, switch it all off, um, that could be a problem because older machines uh, can actually lose their memory because um, these machines have got a small battery backup and this battery backup is like an old sort of rechargeable battery and um, if that battery um, becomes uh, you know so that it's not charging up or whatever it's faulty then effectively if you switch the machine off it can completely lose its memory so you've got to be very careful there um, so before you switch a machine off make sure that you know it's okay to switch that machine off so ask someone because I've actually seen this happen and the machine's lost all its parameters and everything so if you don't know the machine then don't switch it off leave it switched on until someone says well yeah this is okay um, but it's always good to switch off the hydraulics of the machine so if you press the e-stop in uh, then just the computer will stay on and the reason why we don't leave the rest of the machine going is because these machines have got slideway oil which pumps oil into these slides here. You can see the slides. And um, oil is pumped into these slides all the while um, on a CNC machine. And if you leave the machine switched on and it's not moving around, it will keep pumping this oil out, which is... a uh, which is a it's a total loss oil system. So this oil's being just wasted. It's coming out and going into your coolant and being thrown away. And it's very expensive. So the whole process of leaving your machines on um, can cost you a lot of money. I saved a company and a, a big named company, which I can't name names, but saved them an absolute fortune by suggesting that they did this because they were leaving all the machines on all the while. So from an eco point of view or whatever you want to call it, um, then you don't want to leave this running. So when we, uh, when we turn the machine off, the first thing we usually do is hit the e-stop. But again, we need to read up on this. And then we would press the power off button. Now when we come to turn the machine back on, the first thing we do is um, clear the emergency stop. So you'd have to rotate that emergency stop button um, and that releases it. There's your emergency stop button there. And when that button's depressed, you have to release it to make it come back out again. And then you would hit the reset button. Now, what we have to do when we first turn a machine on is pass it over what we call a reference point. And we call this zero return. Now, CNC machine um, remembers everything. So all the offsets that are stored in the machine, all the positions, all the datums, all the programs. Everything is kept in the machine. 
and you won't lose these generally speaking they'll stay in but you should back them up so you should have um, a USB or you might have a cable or connect it to a PC you should back all this up but the machine normally will not lose any of this information so the machine when you switch it back on it remembers everything the only thing it doesn't remember is where it is so it doesn't actually know where it is at this point in time and what we have to do is pass it over a reference point and it passes over this reference point when it passes over this reference point it then says yeah I know where I am and from then on everything just works normally the only other thing you may have to do when you switch a machine on is reference the tool changer so it might not know exactly where the tool changer is there's like a drum with all the tools in and it rotates this drum and finds its number one tool and again you'd have to read your manuals on this but you probably have to press a turret index button or something like that and it was index round find its first tool and say yeah I know where that is as well so I'm going to zero return this machine now if you look on this control panel you see this zero return and that means that we're going to pass this machine over its reference points now you can do this at any time you can do it when you're actually running the machine it's a quick way of getting it back getting the tool back up in the air to its position and when you first turn the machine on it will restrict what you're allowed to do uh, before you have actually zero returned it so for example you you couldn't run a program because the machine doesn't actually know where it is um, it'll let you jog so it'll let you move the machine around uh, very slowly um, some will let you rapid your hand wheel usually works so you can use your hand wheel to wind it around but your MDI mode and your auto mode won't work your edit mode will work so you can go into programs usually and edit and play around with programs but you can't actually run the machine until you've zero returned it and you don't have to worry about getting this wrong because it just won't let you do it some machines you have to open and close the doors so that it, it reads that as well so it knows where the doors are in other words it sort of locates the fact that the doors were open and now they're closed so you sometimes have to do that as well another thing worth checking as well is go around the side of the machine and make sure that all those doors are shut as well so if you look at my operating panel now I've got my axes that I can move around and you see these uh, uh, these are lights and on all machines you'll have an actual light that will come on to tell you that you've reached your zero return point these will be different on different machines but generally speaking you'll have something on the control panel that will show you that you've hit zero return so and your rapid overrider will work on this so if you were to put your rapid overrider you know down really low then this will be slow or whatever but the machine will slow down when it gets near its reference point anyway so you can have your rapid on whenever you want and I'm going to hit this button and you'll notice mine's just carrying on once I've sent it there and it gets there and you see that lights come on now and then I'm going to do always do the Z first because if you start moving the X and Y you could hit something some machines won't even let you do that now I'm going to do my X axis and you'll see when it gets there my light comes on and then my Y axis if I had a rotary axis an A axis I'd have to reference that as well and now my machine's referenced and it's all ready to go and that's all I really need to do at the beginning of that program to to start sorry not at the beginning of the program at the beginning of the shift or whatever when I first turn this machine on so that will get the machine ready ready to run now some machines you don't need to do this it's got the modern machines um, made in the last few years uh, will have what we call absolute encoders and these absolute encoders the machine knows where it is even when you switch it off so you never need to do this reference it will reference but you don't ever need to do it you just switch it off and on uh, as you like and it always remembers where it is so if you've got one of those types of machines this won't be necessary but most of the machines out there at the moment do need this and this procedure varies from one machine to another what you're allowed to do for example on some machines you Mazax particularly um, you can um, you can leave your machine in this position and when you come to switch your machine on 
all you do is move the, the axis in the opposite direction and it sort of bounces back to zero return and references itself. So some machines have got some quite clever things built in, but this procedure that I've just showed you will always work. And if you leave the machine sort of with the tool down here and each axis away from this zero point, it's quite easy to return it back and zero it um, at, the, at the time when you switch the machine on.